Good morning, guys. This is the lesson for ACA on January 31st. It's Monday. Welcome back from the weekend. Um, we're going to start out with two brain pop videos. Um, I will put it in the recording, and my class will stay nice and quiet so we can all hear. Just give me a second. Okay, here's the first one. Oh. Dear Tim and Moby, I'm trying to study the commutative property. Can you help me from the shelf? Sure. The commutative property is a rule about how we can add and multiply things together. For example, two plates plus three plates equals five plates. And now we've got three plates plus two plates, and that also equals five. What do you mean this is baby stuff? You're the one who made the tea party. Besides, I'm trying to make a point. If 3 plus 2 equals 5, and 2 plus 3 also equals 5, then 2 plus 3 must equal 3 plus 2. The order of the numbers doesn't change the sum. That's the commutative property of addition. For any numbers a and b, a plus b equals b plus a. There's a commutative property of multiplication, too. 3 times 2 equals 6. And 2 times 3 equals 6. 3 times 2 equals 2 times 3. For any numbers a and b, a times b equals b times a. There we go, the commutative property of multiplication. Hey, I'm stuck in this chair. <clears throat> Hey, can I have some more tea? May I please have some more tea? Character straw. All right, yes, very short. All right, and here's our next one. Ow. Dear Tim and Moby, what's the associative property all about? From Malcolm. The associative property deals with grouping numbers. It works for multiplication and addition. You may not be able to mix apples and oranges, but we can add and multiply them. Let's throw some bananas in there, too. We've got 6 plus 9 plus 4 equals 19 pieces of fruit. Using parentheses like this groups the apples and oranges together. It's a rule that we always do what's in the parentheses first. So, 6 plus 9 equals 15, plus 4 equals 19. Right. Even if we move the parentheses and change the order of addition, our answer still comes out the same. No matter how we arrange the add-ins, their sum is always 19. This is an example of the associated property of addition. For any numbers a, b, and c, a plus b plus c equals a plus B plus C. The associative property works for multiplication, too, but let's check it just to be sure. 6 times 9 equals 54, and 54 times 4 equals 216. 9 times 4 is 36, and 36 times 6 equals 216. It checks out. That's the associative property of multiplication. For any numbers A, B, and C, A times B times C, equals A times B times C. And that's the associative property of work. Now can I have an apple? Thanks, Bobby. All righty. So those are just cute little videos. Um, but we are going to be talking about those today. And a lot of those, again, like I said, it's pretty straightforward stuff. You're like, yeah, go on the fire, of course it's, it's like that. Um, but sometimes we forget and we are going to point it out. So we're going to be talking about different properties um, that all have to do with equivalent expressions. We introduced that term last week, equivalent expressions. And let's break it down. Equivalent means equal in expressions or equations just means it's the same equation, it's just written slightly different. Okay, so the first two we just watched little videos on, the commutative property, everyone say that word, commutative. 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 Notice that there is a T, it is not commutative, it is commutative. Okay, so the commutative property is just saying that the order 
in which you do, the order of addition and multiplication expressions can be flipped. And we still get the same answer. Do we agree with that statement? Yes. 4 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 4. Okay, so they have like the algebraic version of it. A plus B is the same thing as B plus A. Again, I'm going to put a numbers example in there just so we have reference. Uh, Ryan, give me two numbers to add. Um, 12 plus 15. 12 plus 15. Class, do you agree that would be the same thing as the B plus 12? Yes. Yes, it would. Okay. Um, for multiplication, A times B is the same as B times A. Which one? Give me two numbers. Um, 700 times 70. Oh, okay. Let's give some smaller numbers. 7, no, we're not going to, we're going to use different numbers. 8 times 4 is the same thing class as 4 times 8. Now, what operations do you notice that we're doing? We're doing multiplication and addition. Which ones are we? So, it's subtraction and division. Let's just take a quick second. You don't have to write this. Let's just look at the board. Do they work for that? So, if I did, um, let's say 12 minus 50 and 50 minus 12, are those equivalent expressions? Do they get the same answer? No. no. One of them would be negative, one of them would be positive, and we know that those do not be the same thing. Same thing with division. Okay? We would not get the same answer. Okay, that is the commutative property. The next one is the associative. Everyone say associative. Associative is how it is grouped. The grouping of numbers in addition to multiplication problems does not change the answer. Okay, so the algebra example is there. Let's do some numbers. If I did three plus 4 plus 5 is equal to, what would I change it to? 3 plus 4. I'm not changing the order. I'm changing the grouping. If I did that, I just moved the grouping symbols one set forward. Okay, because last week we talked about that order of operations that Gemma, okay, and it says to do parentheses first. So in this first one, 4 plus 5 is 9, and 9 plus 3 is? 12. Okay, over here, 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 plus 5 is 12. It gives us the same answer. Okay? When in doubt, like if, you, if you're if you unsure, if they're equivalent expressions, when in doubt, solve it out. Okay? It's, it's always good to just check yourself before the trip. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Um, and same thing with multiplication. Um, 7 times 8 times 9 would be the same thing. Change it up for me. Um, yeah. I'm not changing the word. 7 times 8 times 9. Okay? And again, what operations do we not see? Subtraction. Subtraction. Okay? One other thing I want to point out about the associative is that it's all the same operation the whole time. It's always all addition or always all subtraction. Or, sorry, addition or multiplication. Um, you might get a, a spicy problem where the bottle try to trick you. Three times four plus five is equal to three times four plus five. Okay? It's the same expression, but they change the grouping. In this case, I would get a different answer. Okay, because I noticed that there's two different operations. Up here, it's always the same operation. But again, when in doubt, you can solve it out without two checks. Okay, um, so let's just reflect on those two because you are going to have to be able to tell, okay, um, here is a given thing. Like I might give you an expression like this and I ask which property is it talking about. So we're not having our own side conversation so you don't want to miss it. Um, let's talk about the word commutative and associative. Um, commutative. Uh, so when this Lionel drives to work, uh, or your parents are driving to work, and maybe they have to drive to town or something like that, when you drive, that's called like your commute, commute to work, right? And if this Lionel is, let's say I'm starting from my apartment and coming here, isn't that the same thing as it's the same drive as my drive from school to my house. Yeah. It's just a different order. 
So the commutative is just talking about the order. I'm going the same two places, home to an apartment or apartment to home. It's just the order in which I do it. It's like, okay, so again, if I was, if this is Ms. Lytle's apartment and this is school, that's what I should say, not apartment. Okay, this commute in this direction is the same thing as that, it's just a different order. Okay. Yes. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, just checking. I mean, I know I need permission for my students to live where I live, but thank you. Okay, um, so commute, commutative is talking about the what? It's talking about the order. Very good. Be associative, okay? Ms. Lytle, uh, she works with Ms. Ballish and Ms. Target. Those are my associates because they are they're who's grouped with me, right? We all teach sixth grade math at Seven Lake Senior High. They're my group of people. Okay, they are my associates. Okay, so when you think of the associative property, it's talking about the grouping of things. So somebody yes. assigned me to be your associate? Me personally, y'all would have to y'all. Yes, those are those are your associates. Oh yes, instead of my time frame. My associates. No. That can be a new fancy word that you work with. Okay. okay. All righty, two more properties, and these are more straightforward. The identity property means it keeps its identity. I'm still me. Okay, it says, I'm me and I'm real me. Okay, it, it, it keeps its identity. So the addition, the identity property of addition is when you add blank added to a number does not change the value. So what can I add to any number and it changes it to class? Zero. Zero. If I add zero to myself, if I do five plus zero, it says it's five, right? Yeah. When I'm adding, so zero is added to a number and it does not change the value. So if I had 2,401, if I add zero, what does it say? 2,401. Okay, that identity, it stays itself. Okay, there's a number in multiplication. What can be multiplied to say itself? One. One. Okay. So the identity property of multiplication is using that one. Okay? If you're ever confused, just think about how do you keep your identity in that operation? Um, so if I did 73 times one, it does not change its identity. Okay? Good? Yeah. That was pretty straightforward. It sounds like what it is. And the last one is the inverse property. Okay, inverse, we sort of used that word before, inverse. The additive inverse and multiplicative inverse. I've used it, but you probably just like glanced over and wrote one. Okay. But it's sort of like it's similar to the opposite. It's not always opposite, but it's similar to the opposite. So addition, adding a number and its opposite. It is the opposite in this case. Opposite equals zero. Okay, the inverse property. So what could I uh, if I had Seven. What? Seven plus what would give me zero? Negative. Negative seven. It's opposite. What's the opposite of seven times? Negative seven. Negative seven. Do you agree that equals zero? Yeah. 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 Lovely. Yeah. All right. And then the oh. inverse. Thank you. The inverse property of multiplication is a little different, and I'm using different word for it. Instead of talking about the opposite, what have I talked about with the multiplicative? The, the upside down thing. The upside sideways. That what's that word? It starts with an R. Prepositional. Oh, um, Jackson, what was that word? No. Kennedy, say it one more time. The reciprocal. The reciprocal. Multiplying by a number and the reciprocal. Okay, so let's test ourselves out. Thank you so much. Reciprocal. So if I had, um, I'll do what it not so spicy and then spicy. Okay, let's do 13. What would be the reciprocal of 13? It's not negative 13, okay? Turn it into a fraction. Okay, how do I turn 13 into a fraction? Plus over one, what's the reciprocal? One over 13. One over 13. Okay, so times one over 13 would give me one. Let's just check that because you're like, well, I don't think so. I think it's wrong. It's okay. 13 plus, thank you. 13 times one over 13. 
Again, we just said the whole number times a fraction. I don't like that. So I can put this over 1. 13 over 1 times 1 over 13. Just check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. 13 times 1 is? 13 over 10. And then 1 times 13? And the number divided by itself? Very good. Okay? So, if we want to spice up our lives a little bit, um, what would be... Ooh, Three fourths. What's the reciprocal of three fourths? Four over three. Four over three. That would be its multiplicative inverse. That's the reciprocal. You would get twelve over twelve, which is one. So it sounds fancy, but it's not fancy. Yeah, it sounds fancy. It's really not. Okay. So just reviewing those properties. The inverse property is how to get it. It's like its opposite. So the opposite of addition would be that negative number. So the opposite of multiplication would be that reciprocal. The identity keeps itself. The associative, who Ms. Lyle works with, grouped with me. And then the commutative, that drive, it's the same order. Or sorry, same drive, just in different order. Are you all good with that? Okay, when we forget it tonight, guess what? We have our notes that we did so loosely speaking, and we'll flip back to it. Okay, so let's get some practice on that now. What's going to happen uh, before y'all do anything on here? Y'all have a number nine. It's in our mind. But number nine, y'all can cross that out. Yes. Yeah. That's a property we're talking about in a couple of days. Okay. Also on your homework, uh, number four. Go ahead and cross that one out. You're welcome, Ari. Is that homework the last day? Yes. Yeah. Also cross out. Uh, thank you so much. You're not talking about all of them. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Yes, ma'am. I do not. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Remember, the final is recorded. Here we go. So, what's going to happen on this is we're going to determine uh, whether the two expressions are equivalent. Okay, we're going to see if they would give us the same answer. And then we're going to tell us what property is applied. So, we'll probably have to refer back to that front page. So, first, is it equivalent? I see 7 times in parentheses 3 times 2, and then yeah. is that equal to 7 times 3 times 2? So, when in doubt, solve it out. Let's do this. So, on this side, okay, I'm seeing if those two are equivalent. I like to solve it. The order of operations tells me I'm going to do which part first. Parentheses, 3 times 2 classes, 6 times 7. What's that going to give me? 42. Okay, just to check, again, you might be able to just visually see, but if you don't, this is how to solve it. Over here, I'm going to do that parenthesis first. That gives me 21 times 2. So, are those equivalent? Yes. Yes. Now, here's the tricky part, which I did see, is that. What changed in there? The numbers are the same, the operation, but the grouping is different. And which property was it that did grouping? My associate. Okay, the associative property of the oh, yeah. property. Y'all see how I did that? Yes. Okay, so, yes, you're going to say yes or no. Um, if the answer is no, so let's do, okay, let's do the next one. Number two, what operation is happening? Division. Division. So automatically I should be thinking that no. No. Okay, automatically, I should be thinking no. But again, if you are unsure, just check it out. If 16 divisible by 8, yeah, it gives me 2. But if I hit 8 divided by 16, is that going to be, if I'm going to be a negative, it's no. It's going to be a decimal. It's going to be the same thing as 1 half. It's not 0.2. Okay, it's 1 half. Okay. Huh? Same question. Okay. So does that, are those the same thing? Is two the same thing as one half? Yes. No. 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 So is it equivalent? No. Okay. What property do you think they're trying to use? Which one are they trying to use? Hudson and Brody. Which operation are they trying to use? What did they change? The numbers stay the same, but... What change is it? Are you the inverse? No. Is it 8 divided by 6? Yes? Okay, so let's go look. What changed? Okay, guys. Up here. What is changing about the numbers? They are just 
Oh, you like they're flipping. They're flipping the order. They're trying to use the food commutative, but it does not work. So why? Okay, commutative. I'm just gonna put a com. Does not work with. I'm gonna put the vision. I'm doing some work here. So. Yeah. Do y'all understand what you're doing for the rest of the page? You're saying is it equivalent or not? If you were listening, you would know. If you weren't having science conversations, you would know. Okay. You're seeing if it's equivalent or not, and then which property they are using or which one they're trying to use. Take some time, go ahead and finish the rest of the page and check with your table of covers. Pause and play when you're ready. For number three, 27 times one and one, Kyle, equivalent or no? Yes. Uh, okay, and what property do you say? That's what I said. Oh, sorry. So number three? Yes. Okay. What property do you think it's doing? Identity. Okay. Um, I agree they're trying to trick you with identity, but they are not equivalent. What is 27 times 1 class? Yes. And what's 1? One? 1. Or 27 and 1 equivalent? No. no. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. It must be time to tell. If they have to like 1 times 27, yes. They're... Uh, they're trying to do identity, but it needs to be by the time itself. Identity, but I'm um, a number. I don't know. Like, they did multiply by anything. Okay, number four. Brody, yes or no? Um, is it yes? You tell me. Is it yes? I think so. Okay. And what property do you think they did? Identity. Okay. Do you all agree or disagree? Agree. Agree. Identity. Uh, number five, Cameron, what did you say? Okay. Um, what did you get for each side when you solved it out? Did you solve it out? Okay. Miss Lyle says that you need to solve it out. Why don't you do that? Ryan? Um, it's actually no because it's a fraction. Very good. It's no um, because subtraction uh, subtraction, no work. What property are they trying to do it with? It, which property are they trying to do it with? They're trying to do it with no associative. Okay? If you actually solve it out, you'll see that it does not work. Um, because 5 minus 2 is? Three. 12 minus 3 is nine. 9. If I did 12 minus 5, that gives me 7. Minus 2 gives me 5. Are 9 and 5 the same? No. Okay? Uh, number 6, Lana, what did you say? Yes. Which property? Look at the paper on the front. That's what I've been saying for the last five minutes. She's going to figure it out. Thanks, guys, though. Which one do you think that is? 14 and 1 times 14. They're multiplying by 1. Nope. The only one you ever get. I did see. Because it's not changing at all, it's multiplying by 1. It's keeping its identity. 32 plus 4 and 4 plus 32, Rory. Yes or no for number 6, or sorry, 7. Um, yes. yes, with property? All that's changing is they're flipping the order. That would be the look back at the notes. Which one is only changing the order? The file will talk about. Which one is talking about the order? Copy paper. Okay. That is the associative. Last one, number eight, Jackson. Um, no. Because? 
Because it's division. Just straight up because it's division. Okay, they're also changing the grouping, and the grouping is. Does not work with associative. But straight up just because it's division. Associative. Okay? I told y'all that was the hardest part, and that's the hardest part that y'all are skipping every single time. You have to practice naming the properties because it's going to be on your test. Okay? Uh, can you go a little off? Sorry, guys. Um, let me move this box. Okay, let me do one more problem and then you'll see how it works. Uh, Mr. Watley, Ms. Lycos, and Mr. Felser plan to take their music classes to a musical review. Tickets cost $6 each and they need a total of 48 tickets. Using properties, write two equivalent expressions that could be used to determine the total cost. So what is one way I could figure out the cost? How would we figure out the cost of 48 tickets that cost $6 each? 48 tickets? You all agree. If I could do 48 times 6 and that gives me the cost of my tickets. Okay. Based off of that, what's another way I could write that and solve it? Lucy. 6 times 48. I'm just changing the order. What property is that, guys? From just changing the order. Commutative property. Okay? That's what it's asking you to do on those other ones. It's just changing how you write it. What's for homework is the rest of this page. Um, again, number four, that's a property we haven't talked about yet, and we'll talk about it in a few days. Kids that aren't family. 